Here's a somewhat typical question you would find in the circular motion or uniform circular motion kind of unit. You have some object that's being spun around, held only by tension. It seems like they're not giving you very much, but a lot of things end up canceling out. So hopefully if you go through this motion once, you'll be able to navigate through these kind of problems without too much issues. So first off, the first recognition is that we are in fact dealing with a horizontal circle here. So that while if you look from above, it is going in a circle, most of the interesting happens kind of in the vertical slice here that we see. Because you can see that if you draw the free body diagram of the person, you have mg pointing down, and tension always runs along the, in this case, the chain. So there's your 25 degrees. And that's it. That's the only thing touching your object. So that completes your free body diagram. The next realization is because we're dealing with horizontal circle, we would have centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration. So this is encouraging us to use our radial tangential kind of coordinate system to follow our acceleration. So because we know that in a circle, the acceleration points into the center of the circle, in this case horizontally, we would put our coordinate system with the radial component like that. Ultimately, therefore, we're not decomposing mg like in an inclined plane problem. We're instead decomposing the tension force itself. The tangential actually is actually, it's got a little bit of 3D-ness here. It's actually heading out of the page in this case because the person is swinging towards us. And you can draw that as a circle dot. The remaining coordinates we would usually name as z as the third dimension. These are just names. So you could use X and Y for horizontal and vertical if you wish. The key is that we're not willy-nilly picking vertical and horizontal. We're trying to match whatever our acceleration is doing. In this case, we know based on the motion that there is a horizontally inward centripetal acceleration. So we can write that down here. AR is going to be V squared over R because you have circular motion. The tangential acceleration is expected to be zero because the person is maintaining the angle, so the speed is not expected to change. Or you can also argue that in the tangential direction, which is in and out of the page here, there is no forces. And because of the horizontal circle, this person is not moving up or down, so in the up-down direction, the acceleration is also zero. One thing to note here, a little tricky with this problem, is that this R here is not simply 1.5, right? The R here is the radius of the circular path, which is going to be the 1.5 plus whatever this distance is. So R here is equal to 1.5 meter plus 2.3 meter sine 25 degrees. There's no more significance here, so I can just punch this out as a number and get that. And so we can see that from kind of setup, we're going to be using forces so that we can find our radio acceleration so that we can find our tangential speed, which is trapped in my centripetal acceleration. Some of you might get nervous that we're not given a mass here and how, so how do we deal with mg? In many of these cases, the m cancels out. So we'll just carry it along and hopefully everything works out. So we're still going to be doing sum of forces equals ma. And so in the radial direction, which is what we care about in terms of the tangential speed, the only force that's happening there is the inward force, which is positive, of this unknown tension sine 25 degrees. Right? Even though T as a magnitude is unknown, we can still break it down appropriately given that we know its direction. But what is T? Well, we have to look at the Z direction then sum of forces in the z direction is equal to zero. That's equal to t cosine 25 degrees minus mg. And so we can solve for t here to sub it into the other one. So as we sub it into the other one, we'll get that v can be figured out with this last equation here because that's just mg cosine 25 degrees sine 25 degrees. And indeed, you can see that the m does in fact cancels out. So my V square is going to be G times R sine 25 to divide cos 25. You can change that to tangent if you like, or not. You can just punch the whole thing in your calculator. It's all up to the calculator now, really. Again, R is this 2.472. So as we punch out this number, we get V square to be that. 
ultimately V is equal to that number. So about 3.4 meters per second. So if you're riding this chair, you would feel kind of, you know, against the wind of about 3.4 meters per second. So this is helping us relate what we know about tension because it runs along the cable itself. And based on the motion, we are choosing to use radial tangential coordinate system to correspond to our centripetal acceleration.